Good evening, everybody. And I'm really excited to be here today. I'm very thankful to the Mind Science Foundation for giving me this huge opportunity. And I'm also thankful to Mike and Dr. Mike Anderson, my supervisor, who is here to support me. So, uh, and I'm very delighted to be explaining our project here today. So, if there ever was a law of human behavior which could be trusted, I think it is this. When people find themselves in an unpleasant situation, they immediately try to remove themselves from the situation. If your hand accidentally touches fire, you immediately pull it away. But what happens if this thing, which is harsh, is in fact stored in your memory? What happens if the pain is not being externally induced, but is emerging from the depths of your very own mind? It is a fact of life that most of us have experienced some painful, sometimes even traumatic incidents in the past. And when we confront reminders to such incidents, it becomes unpleasant, sometimes even scary. And what do most people tend to do in such situations? They tend to uh, avoid the retrieval of such unwelcome thoughts and memories from intruding into their awareness. What we, in the memory control lab, we try to uh, capture the essence of this very moment when people try to push the un un unwelcome thoughts and un unwanted memories from seeping into their consciousness. I'm very interested in studying the brain mechanisms which are involved, and I'm also interested in this question. So what happens when this functionality fails? In order to illustrate this point, let me tell you a story. So this is the story of a man who was a great storyteller himself. Spalding Gray, as some of you might be aware, he was a great American writer, performer. Uh, he's famous for his autobiographical monologues, which he performed primarily on stage. And if you've seen his performances, he was very original and so full of life. But uh, Grace's own story took a tragic turn when he met with a car accident. And as a result of the accident, he injured his right frontal lobe in his brain. And while this injury did not translate to an immediate loss of functionality, what it did lead to was a remarkable increase in the number of dark and depressive and ruminative thoughts that Gray started to entertain. And for years, Gray struggled to get away from these thoughts, but in the end, very sadly, Gray ended up taking his own life. All this led Oliver Sacks, the famous neurologist and a friend of Gray's, to remark, and I'm quoting him here, had some sort of a buffer a protective inhibitory frontal lobe function being breached because of the accident, leading to an uncontrollable rush of previously suppressed and repressed thoughts and fantasies into his consciousness. Through our project, we intend to see if Oliver Sacks was correct or not. We intend to investigate if this critical region is indeed a critical shield in the brain. And in the process, we intend to study something vital about the regulation of consciousness itself. But how do you conceptualize the control of thought? If we think carefully about it, it is actually quite similar to one another form of control that we all indulge in on a daily basis. We are all involved in the stopping of our actions. We live in a world which is constantly changing, and in order to adapt to it, we need to be able to regulate and stop our actions properly. Could this stopping of actions have been the foundation for stopping of thoughts? Do, can there be similar brain regions which are involved in both forms of control? Do we know answers to these very important questions? What do we know so far? So this is a representation of the brain. And this is uh, the, the highlighted regions that you see are the regions in the brain which are activated when people are engaged in stopping their thoughts or controlling their actions. This is a result from a meta-analysis study. So you, you're looking at a slide which has about 1,500 people's worth of data. And we are interested in this precise region of activity because it, uh, results have shown that activity in this region is critical for when people are engaged in controlling their thoughts and their actions. But imaging studies can only tell us so much. They can only take us so far. What I think would be really cool is if we can put all this ticket's knowledge to test and if we can actually investigate and see if this critical region is indeed helping people to control their thoughts and their actions. And that is exactly what we propose to do in our project. 
But how do we go about proving the functionality of a brain region? It would be helpful if we can temporarily shut down activity in that region and see if that affects behavior. But can we really do that? It turns out now we can. So we have this innovative, uh, fancy technological tool at our disposal now. So this is a non-invasive brain stimulation technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS. TMS works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. The coil you see there is the TMS coil, and it's completely non-invasive, completely safe, and it's very focal, and it's placed on the scalp of the, uh, the person you're stimulating. And we would be placing the coil in our critical region in the right frontal lobe. And TMS, it turns out, can be used for different purposes. It can be used to temporarily disrupt brain activity in the targeted region. It can also be used to temporarily enhance brain activity in the targeted region. So in the first project that we are proposing, we plan to disrupt activity in this critical region, in some sense simulating the Spalding Gray experience and seeing if that affects people's ability to control their th thoughts and their actions. And if we are indeed successful in proving that this region is critical and it plays a shield function in the brain, then we propose to do something even better. We propose to use the very same technology, TMS, and see if we can actually enhance the functioning of this critical region. And this is very important because if you consider disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, which many people, including war veterans, people who've been through natural disasters or personal trauma, all suffer from, it's inherently an inability to control the painful thoughts and memories which keep seeping into their consciousness. Now, if you are able to enhance a critical region using non-invasive brain stimulation, we are actually making people better at controlling these unwanted thoughts and memories. Spalding Gray's story does not have a happy ending. Gray ended up taking his own life. We need to remember that many Spalding Grays live here amongst us. Some of you might even know of someone with a similar story. All these people are constantly fighting a battle which is emerging from the pain, which is emerging from the depths of their very own consciousness. Brain injuries, trauma, stroke can all lead to an impaired shield in the brain. Through a series of cleverly designed experiments, we intend to offer some insights into and also provide possible means of enhancing the functioning of this critical shield region, which we believe could be a crucial armor in people's struggles against the adversities of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.